Ed, good evening, everyone, from Roberts Stadium. We bring you exciting Saluki basketball, Missouri Valley Conference style, as the Dogs take on the Aces here in Evansville. I'm Mike Trude. This is Russ Eisenstein. We're going to bring you the action tonight. These two teams are not used to being in the position they are. The Salukis are 10 and 10. Evansville is 10 and 11. On the plus side, the Salukis have beaten the Aces four straight times, and three of them have not very have not been very close. They sure haven't. Southern has started traditionally well in the first half against Evansville, and the last time here at Roberts Stadium, they blew them out in the first five minutes of the ball game. We talked about the battle for mediocrity tonight. <laughs> Southern and Evansville both were picked to uh, be at the top of the Missouri Valley Conference standings. Both teams coming off pretty disappointing losses. Of course, the Salukis got hammered at Creighton the other night, and then Evansville playing at Drake, a team with only seven scholars players got beat by 20 some points as well so both teams hoping to turn things around tonight and we hope it's the good way for the Salukis absolutely you know for Southern going up to Omaha they won up there last year and for uh, Evansville going up to Drake not a very easy place to play this year at the Knapp Center in Des Moines and Evansville certainly felt that the other night no question Brian Dunn is with us as is Tom Weber as always we hope we have a great basketball game for you tonight it's the Salukis and Aces when Russ and I come back we'll check the starting lineups from Evansville so stay tuned we got a good one for you coming up next Welcome back to Roberts Stadium, the Salukis and Evansville Aces from Evansville Southern at 10 and 10, Evansville at 10 and 11. The Aces are five and five in the conference. The Salukis are four and five in the conference. Let's check out the starting lineup for tonight's ball game. First for the visiting Salukis. They will go as they have in the past few basketball games with Josh Cross and Abel Schroeder at the forward spots. Sylvester Willis gets the call at center. Kent Williams and Marcus Belcher will be the guards. Kent Williams has done very well against Evansville in, in last year anyway. He's a guy who, if he can get things going early, Southern has a good chance. Sure, and he obviously is the key, the sophomore from Mount Vernon, averaging 17.1 points a ball game. He is the key tonight for Southern. Evansville will go with Adam Seitz and Craig Snow at the forward positions. Chuck Hetty will be at the center. Stanton and Runyon are the guards. Not a very big basketball team at all. Southern likes the matchups that it has in this game. And they will have a good matchup against the Aces. You know, a uh, point for Evansville. Craig Snow was their all-MVC player last year. He is averaging 12.9 and leads the ball club, but they aren't experiencing the offense that they had from him last year. All right, Tom Weber, as we mentioned, is standing alongside Tom. What do you got for us tonight? Guys, before we get started, we want to ask you, the viewer, to call in 1-800-745-9748 and support this kind of programming on public television. It's going to be a great game. And for those of you who couldn't make it to Evansville, Indiana, we made the trip for you. So please thank us, and we want you hope that you'll thank us by giving us that call and pledge your financial support to keep these kinds of programs on these channels. Guys? All righty, here we are underway. Southern controls the tip as Sly Willis tips it back to Marcus Belcher. Southern in their black uniforms, and yes, They've only won two basketball games in those black uniforms this year. They have the maroon and the white trim. Williams double dribbles right off the bat on pressure from Adam Sykes. We talk about the uh, tough ball games that both these two schools had uh, last week. Southern was up 4 nothing in the game against Creighton, so maybe a good start, a, a good couple of baskets isn't what Southern needs now, but of course you'd like to see it against the Aces here on the road. Evansville actually starting a whole new group of players. Mark Galeria, that's Clint Cuffle with it now, number 23. The big center there is Dan Light of a freshman who's done very well early on this year. Out of bounds, it's going to say they goes off with Southern. I think they're going to change the call, and Evansville will keep it. Lytle averages close to 10 points a ball game. He's a freshman from Edwardsville. And he certainly has given them good minutes. He's a good presence for them down low. As we mentioned, Evansville doesn't have a lot of size, and Jim Cruz usually has a couple bigger trees in lineup, but he doesn't have it this year. Shot is no good. Controlled by Abel Schroeder, and the dogs come back up. Evansville likes the man-to-man -man defense. They have played a lot of zone this year, though. That comes from Bob Knight. Jim Cruz was a Bob Knight disciple, and the classic man-to-man -man style that Bobby Knight had it translated down here to Evansville. Belcher travels. Two turnovers, two possessions for the Dogs. For Southern, Marcus Belcher was the player that really uh, started to light the comeback in the second half, if you could call it a comeback, in Omaha. He had 10 points and 12 points he finished the ball game with. And he certainly bunched a couple points together, albeit in a uh, small effort in the comeback. That's Hilaria being hounded by Williams. Seitz likes to drive to the hoop. There he pushed off, no call. 
and then he travels. So they didn't give him one call, and Southern got the other one. This is likened to the ball game that we did, uh, Drake and SIU last week, and it was a turnover fest and a lot of fouls as well. And there you see the push off, and then you see uh, travel coming a little later on. Belcher, Hilaria likes to play defense. Southern needs that good spacing like they had in the ball game uh, a little earlier on. They had against uh, Indiana State. And they had good spacing early on against Bradley as well. Cross top of the key. 13 on the shot clock. Josh all the way to the hoop. Up and under. No good. Tip up. Off of off of Evansville and Southern will keep it. It's so very important for Southern to stress the inside matchups in this ball game tonight. Even though they're going up against a 6'10 player in Dan Lytle, he is a little more inexperienced than Southern's uh, players down low. You look at Jermaine Deerman and you look at Sly Willis. Willis has had more quality minutes than Lytle has had this year. Long rebound comes to couple. Transition. Steal for the Salukis. I think Sly kind of pushed off down there. It was a good entry pass, but he came around the right side and made a nice move to tip the basketball away. You won't see Evansville running too much. Uh, they're not a transition running type of team. They will run sparingly. Fouls called on Dan Lytle. It's his first and the first team foul. There is still no score. 17.55 left to go. And the dogs on offense take it out of the hash mark. Both these coaches, Bruce Weber from Purdue in the Big Ten. Jim Cruz, of course, the disciple of Bob Knight at Indiana. Cruz at UE in his 16th year. He has amassed over 280 wins. Valeria knocks it off from Sly's hands. 24 on the shot clock. We are close to three minutes into this ballgame and no score, partner. Really no movement down low for Southern. They're cutting way at the top of the key. 10 on the shot clock. Williams on sights. Running one-hander is good from Kent. And the dogs lead it 2 to nothing. They match a fine group here from Southern Illinois. Came over on a bus, and there's a bunch of Southern fans right behind this loop event. That time they, they abused uh, Willis down low. It was good positioning from Lytle, and he went up strong. That's what Willis needs to do on the offensive end for SIU. Cross on the wing. Snow guarding him. Snow, the preseason player of the year in the Valley. Sly Willis with a nice strong move inside. And Southern's up 4-2. to two. And Snow's been injured this year. He's come off the bench. He started. He just hasn't had a very good season. Snow was injured on this floor last year during the SIU uh, just blowout win over Evansville. He was an all-MVC player last year. As you mentioned, he was tabbed as the best player in the conference. He hasn't started as many ball games for Evansville this year. He's lost his offensive spark a bit, but still leads him in scoring. Sites. I mentioned he likes to go to the hoop as he did there and Kent Williams is going to be called for that foul. Here's the replay. Watch Sites on the drive. See if Kent gets him. And he did there on the arm I think and it really didn't deter the ball away from him. Didn't matter but he swatted so sure. he got he got called. And with the dribble drive this year the officials really are looking for that and the players know it too. If they touch him and a move to the bucket they're going to get called on. That's Lytle with it. Good steal by Southern. Nice presence down low. They collapsed on the uh, person handling the basketball, and in a result, a steal for Southern. Oh, Abel Schroeder, a nice push shot off the glass for two, and the dog lead at 6 2. Abel averaging 8.9 points per ball game. He is sixth in the MVC in three point shots there with the dribble drive, and a nice job by Abel. One thing that Coach Weber says that he has over Evansville is Southern disrupts their offensive flow. And it's tough for them to run their offensive sets. All they've done so far is try to get it to Lytle down low, and he's had one nice shot, one pretty poor hook shot there, and so they're trying to advance the 6-2 lead. And a couple things with that. Oh, nice what a pick move. by Laria. And he missed it. Southern has numbers. They didn't exploit it, though. Belcher did. That's a three. Marcus Belcher averaging 4.4 points per ball game. We mentioned that he led SIU at Creighton. There's a steal for Schroeder. He's got a run out. And it's 11 to 2. And how do you like that? 
We'll keep it here. Jim Cruz calls timeout, and once again, Southern has gone off to a big lead against the Aces. It, it seems to be uncanny that Southern is going to get a big lead against the Aces. They did it twice in the ball games last year. We mentioned Southern won four in a row. I talked about uh, that with him earlier this year. He just doesn't know what to do against Southern. That was a beautiful look. They didn't exploit the numbers, but they got it to an open man, and Belcher nailed it. Last year, Southern beat this team 76 to 42 in Carbondale, 81 to 59 here at Evansville. At one time, they were up by 32 points. Then in the conference tournament, they won by 12, 75 to 63. In 98, 99, the last game they played, Southern won by 15 points. The games have not even been close. Here's a Here's great drive by Schroeder as he kissed that one off the glass for He two. extended so well, Mike. He knew he was running out of space. He extended, lofted up with the right hand, and got it in. You know, I don't want to, don't want folks to think that it's been so one-sided in the series. Southern does lead 45-43 in the series. It's a, it's a traditional rivalry. It started in 1927. The Aces have won eight of the last 13, but in that, Southern has won four in a row. And of course, the big year in the series was back in 1965. Evansville won three times by five points. And of course, the NIT loss for SIU, or rather the national championship loss, 85-82. The dogs went down in overtime. So a story history between these two schools. What's so nice about Southern start is four different players have scored. Belcher has a three. Williams has that deuce we just saw. Schroeder with the two nice looks inside. And Sylvester Willis had the nice strong move inside. Craig Snow has not even put up a shot. Lytle's put up a couple. And that's about it. Kyle Runyon is checking in. Kyle Runyon, number 42 for the Aces, doesn't practice with the team. His back is so bad that he's what they call a gamer. All he can do is play games. If you watch when he walks, he walks with a very stiff back, and at times during the ballgame, he has to come out and just lay on his back to try to get his, uh, his feeling back in his back. Sights. Stanton in there now. There's Sights from three. Yes. Adam Seitz certainly could fill it up. He's 10th in the league in field goal percentage at 50%, third in free throw percentage, and he can also step out and shoot like he did there. Josh Cross, no. Dearman and Brandon Mills in the lineup for the Salukis. That's Jeremy Stanton. He likes to go to the hoop. Somebody's got to cover him. Lido fouled. Southern was just hitting the wrong place at the right time there. It was a layup and a, a miss on the rebound. And Southern had a couple players right there. And there you see the foul on SIU. Called the foul on Jermaine Dearman. He comes in, picks up a foul right away. There's Jermaine, a good shot of the sophomore out of Indianapolis. And unfortunately for Southern, when you have three people around the bucket and you don't get the rebound, that says that you're not boxing out properly. And Lytle goes to the line and nails the first. He's only a 47 percenter at the line. And he hit them both. So what was 11 to two, is now 11 to 6. We're at our first media timeout. We'll be back after this. WSIU WUSI is proud to bring you exciting live Saluki basketball at home and on the road. Whether it's men's hoops or women's basketball, see it all on WSIU WUSI. Game action, halftime interviews, and sideline updates are coming your way in the days to come. These matchups are coming soon, so stay tuned to WSIU WUSI, your source for Saluki basketball. And welcome back to Robert Stadium. The Dogs lead at 11 to 7 after leading 11 to 2. Evansville has scored five straight. You know, WSIU WUSI has challenged itself to keep the best and reinvent the rest. One of the best things about giving to the SIU television stations is watching your donation work for you. Please call now and support Saluki Basketball with a pledge. The number is 1-800-745-9748. Brian Dunn has joined us tonight as our sideline reporter. Brian, what you got? Thanks, Russ and Mike. Uh, about 20 years ago, Evansville lost their entire team in a plane crash, a tragedy that hits Evansville close to home now that Oklahoma State lost two members of their team in a plane crash about a week ago. Uh, now it comes to terms that Jim Cruz, uh, before the game, said that he wants the Evansville folks to reach out as the others reached out when their team was in need. Uh, student athletes from the University of Evansville are collecting donations uh, at the exits as these people leave to help those Oklahoma State families. And thank you very much, Brian. Dogs lead 11-7, have the ball. That's Dearman, top of the key. 
All alone, Jermaine scores and fouled by Lytle. What a cut by J.D. and great recognition on the right wing. What a beautiful pass and finish as J.D. went up so strong, went down on the baseline. What an entry by Josh right there. And way to finish it, J.D. And he'll have a chance to throw it from the line for a three-point play. Dearman, a 59% free throw shooter, will try to uh, make that conventional three-point play. We know he has one three-pointer on the season, two rather. One at Wichita and one that won the game at home against Indiana State. And he hit it. Of course, Brian touched on the tragedy that occurred here at Evansville back in 1977. It was a, a plane crash. They were going down to play Middle Tennessee State. And of course, uh, they never made it there. And it's something about college basketball and, and communities. And these players are more than players. They are student athletes. They're people. And they affect so many lives and certainly keep there. that team in your prayers. And of course, the Oklahoma State team in your prayers as well. Dearman got Snow with the body, and Craig Snow will shoot two, and he's almost automatic from the free throw line, although he has struggled a little bit this year, hitting at a 68% clip. But he got them both. And another parity between these two schools, Southern was the first team that they played when they got their basketball team back only a year later. Southern got the win. A year ago in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, Brandon Mells touched Evansville for nine three-point shots. That's an MVC tournament record. And Williams, who has not had many touches, couldn't handle that one. It went off of his fingertips out of bounds. And it's 14-9 Southern. Brandon just got so hot in that ball game. Every time he touched the basketball, it went through the nets. I, it just unconscious he was. Evansville in that ball game made sure Williams did not beat them. Here comes JD, watch the slam. He's got five, a nice pick. And he needs to be that emphatic now. He needs to get that power and strength back. He's been without it for so long, and seeing a slam there is good from J.D. Hopefully that translates into the rest of the ballgame. Kyle Runney, number 42, is playing with half a shoe on right now. Snow, short jumper. Boy, he normally doesn't miss those. Back come the dogs. That's a story of the year for Snow. He's missed those jumpers all year. He averages close to 16 last year, close to 17 points when he did play. And this year only averaging 12.9. Referee stops the play, and I think it's to allow Runyon to get his shoe tied to avoid an injury, and it lets Bruce Weber make a couple of substitutions as Belcher and Bowie come in. Sitting down are Mells and Joshua Cross. The parallels between these two ball clubs, we mentioned the ball games that Southern played at Creighton and that Evansville played at Drake. They were first half runs that put him out of the ball game. Evansville was uh, going through a 17 to one run that Drake put up on him. And of course, 32 to two, Creighton put up on Southern that really finished the ball game. Schroeder with it. Bowie. 12 on the shot clock. Needs more movement down low. Maybe a guard coming up top. Tyrese for three, no good. Rebound to Craig Snow. Nice box out there by Craig Snow. He felt J.D. all the way through, made an adjustment, and got the board. Sights. Too strong. Rebound to who? To the Salukis. Goes off of the aces. And Touche Harvey will come into the ballgame now for the Salukis, number 24 out of Houston. And Sly Willis will check back in for Jermaine Dearman. Lytle comes in for Craig Snow, and Snow noticeably favoring that right knee. Both these teams mired around the 500 mark, and at the beginning of the year, nobody thought that it could get that bad for either Evansville or Southern. UE was picked second in the lead. They had all five returning starters back, and Southern was picked fourth in the conference. Of course, they're now down in seven. Bowie, top of the key. Touche Harvey, that's a good matchup for the Salukis. Belcher, no, too strong. Runyon pushes off, no call to get the rebound, and here come the Aces on transition, trailing it by seven. Stanton. Runyon will shoot threes all night. Salukis keep it. Lytle goes flying into the stanchion, but it was his own doing. Sure, he <laughs> flew after that basketball. The fans wanted a little bit of a push off there on Southern. They're not going to get it. Here's it was a the long rebound. 
And Sly kind of boxed him away, and it was a dive by Lido as he tried to get the basketball. It's all him there, folks. It was no foul on Southern. Jeremy Stanton just hounding Marcus Belcher at the point guard position. That's one thing that Evansville is very characteristic of, that strong, tough man-to-man -man defense. Jim Cruz will expect nothing less. Williams forces a three, and it goes down. Kent nailed it. Southern leads it by 10-19-9. He is sixth in the league and three-pointers made. He now has 42 on the year. Rebound by Lytle over everybody's back, but he can't get it to go down. And again, there were three Salukis right there. Could not pull down the rebound. And here's the replay. Look at Lytle, just Johnny on the spot, 6'10", but he misses the easy bunny. It was a flat-footed rebound, too. He didn't even have to go up for it. Lytle has been a man that's uh, usually come off the bench for Evansville this year, but trying to light a spark is Jim Cruz. He knows the season is uh, in desperation time right now. Foul was on Touche Harvey. Just ahead of immediate timeout, if Lytle hits it, we've got one, and he does, and we do. We've got 11.29 left to go in the first half. The Salukis lead the Aces at Southern 19, Evansville 11. And the Salukis lead the Aces. It's 19 to 11 here at Roberts Stadium, and Jermaine Dearman playing a little defense tonight. And let's watch Jermaine in action as he gets the slam for two of his three points. He com completed that conventional three-point play. WSIU WSI wants to challenge yourself and stay curious. When we ask for your money, we are really challenging you by asking will you help support Saluki basketball in the River Region? We know that answer will be yes, so please call now, 1-800-745-9748 with your pledge. Please do that. Tom Weber, where are you somewhere in Robert Stadium? Well, I'm somewhere in the stands, and when you're on the road, you always have to try to look for an SIU fan. I found Don and Susie Kirkland. Now, Don went to SIU, even played baseball, but Susie, you grew up in Evansville. How do you guys keep from fighting all the time? Well, it's kind of difficult, especially when we uh, watch Southern and Evansville play. Um, I'm a Slukey fan, and, and Susie's an uh, Aces fan, so uh, it's interesting, and this is really our first college game this year. Any big bets on the game? I still think the Aces are going to get it. All right, well, there you have it there, guys. Thank you very much. 19-11, <laughs> dogs lead it. That's Jeremy Stanton. Apparently, on defense against Belcher. Apparently, that lady doesn't know that Southern's won four in a row against the Aces. Good rebound by Lytle as Touche Harvey soft on the shot. You know, he's really been a force down low for Evansville tonight. Lytle. Nice strip. Touche, you're allowed to dribble. There you go. Light only had two points in the loss to Drake, and he only had three rebounds for the night. Really not that much of an impact, but he's been that tonight for Evansville. Adam Sykes is just hounding Williams. Can't, can't get it off. Bowie on Snow. Nothing going on for Southern. Nine down on the shot clock. Kent for three. Book it. Williams with a great look outside, and Kent's got eight, and Southern leads it by 11. He is the third leading scorer in the MVC with 17 points per ball game. Had a little bit of a low up at Creighton, but he seems to be getting it back tonight in Evansville. Runyon gets it back to Stanton. Told you he likes to drive. He missed it. Snow with the rebound. Great block by Touche. Looked like he got a little bit of hand, but the official was right there. Good no call. Oh, how about those soft rims, huh? Wow. <laughs> Shooting-wise for Evansville, the rims haven't been friendly tonight. We talk about all those missed bunnies. Mike, you ready for this number? They are shooting 18% from the floor. Southern is shooting 62% from the floor. Schroeder and Cross in. Bowie and Williams sit down. Kent sits down with eight points. Alaria back in for Adam Seitz. And the Evansville point guard, Seitz, and Alaria are just hounding Southern's guards. And Stanton as well. Schroeder now working with Alaria, guarding him. Jim Cruz said that the key to this ball game is guarding Kent Williams tonight. He's not on the floor right now. But that was the key. That's who they wanted to key on. And obviously he has eight, so that mission is being failed right now. Marcus Belcher. Oh, he had a three, passed it up. Takes the two, and he's short. Rebounded to Shea Harvey. He's got to get it back out. He does. Schroeder way off, but it hits the rim, and Southern gets it back, and a rebound by Touche Harvey. Fantastic by Touche. Two big rebounds there on that possession for him. 
He was underneath the hoop on both times. He hawked to the ball. Nice job by SIU. And now they're up by 10. Runyon with it. Nice steal by Touche. He's got two on one. The dogs are everywhere tonight. Stanton pulled Schroeder and a great feed from Touche on the two on one break. And Abel will go to the free throw line. What Here's a nice, replay. Nice job by Touche. And what a dish to a wide open Abel. He just couldn't finish there. But that's a great string of possessions by Touche Harvey. A good offensive possession to get the, the points in the last possession down the floor. And then defensively getting his hands all over the place, creating on both ends. Abel short on that free throw. He's been struggling of late at the free throw line. Clint Kuffel back in for the Aces. Stanton sits down. This Evansville team was trailing Bradley by 23 points a week ago here on this floor with like 16 and a half minutes to go. Came back and won the game in overtime. And Schroeder hits the second of two and the dogs lead it by 11 again, 25-14. Schroeder is 70% from the strike this year. You mentioned that ball game against Bradley partner. Chris Snow had 20, Craig Snow rather, at 25 points in that win. They came back in overtime and this is a very difficult place to play for everyone in the league. And then, of course, they followed it up by that laying an egg up in Des Moines. Schroeder. They, they set it up again. 20 on the shot clock. Belcher to Schroeder, top of the key. Down low to Joshua Cross. Turn around. Yes. That is perfect. When you're up this big in the first half, why run? Why, why go so fast on offense? Southern really milked it there, looked for the good shot, and now they're up by 13. They played well defensively. Here it comes again. Corner and Runyon. Nobody's on Lytle. <laughs> you gotta guard him. He's got eight. This is a kid that averages about three points a ball game, or rather, he averages 10. Check that, 10 points a ball game. He had three in the, in the game against Drake but he doesn't get 10 in the first half usually. <laughs> Absolutely not. Chuck Hetty and Seitz about to check in. Touche. Ran out of bounds. He ran out of room and ran out of bounds. Touche seems to be pretty comfortable in this ball game. Oh, they called a foul. The baseline. They called a foul on him right there. They called the As charge. He ran on. into Lytle, so the foul is on Touche. We've that come to call. another media timeout. 7:35 left to go in the half. The Salukis lead the Aces by a score of 27 to 16. We'll be back. Welcome back to Robert Stadium. 27-16, the Salukis lead the Aces. Did you know that your financial support now enables us to maintain our current program schedule? It also allows us to acquire exciting new programs and determine which basketball games we'll televise next year. So please call now. Support Saluki Basketball and all of your favorite programs with a pledge. 1-800-745-9748. As the Salukis gather in the huddle, let's see what Brian Dunn has for us. Brian. Well, guys, it's always nice to be able to go home. Last night, UE senior forward Craig Snow was able to do just that. He went back to his hometown of Mount Carmel, Illinois, where he had his jersey retired. And more importantly, I'm sure if you ask him, he got to see his home team win. Craig Snow, preseason Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year, currently in this one has two free throws. He was hampered by injury last season and still hampered by injury this year. He was a very prolific player in high school, lit up uh, Southern Illinois at Mount Carmel with uh, all of his double figure scoring. And he was a major get for this program, but he's been hampered by injury the last two years. Mills and Dearman are back in for the Saluki Schroeder with a nice defensive play. Southern is all over the place defensively tonight, Mike. Their hands are just everywhere, creating these turnovers and, and stopping the offense from really moving for Evansville. It's like they know what's coming before it happens, and that's how it's been for the last three games. I've been at, I've witnessed every one of them, and it's, they've all been just unbelievable. There it is again. Mel's good. What a nice move by Brandon Mel's. He, he pulled a little Air Jordan there, recreating in the air. Here's another steal. Williams. No. Cross. No. Josh again. No. Finally, Seitz has it, and Brandon's still back, so there's no run out here. Where, where did Brandon go? 
He just seemed to get his feet caught up on each other and he fell down. But that's all right, Southern had about five chances there and you need to put it down. But they are just all over Evansville tonight. Saluki's turn it over. It's 29-18, they're still up 11. And they're not playing their best offensively by any stretch Certainly and they're still not. up by 11. Yeah. They are shooting the ball particularly well. They are now uh, close to about 57% on the ball game. Evansville is still shooting just around 25%. That's Chuck Hetty. Over to Stanton. Stanton doesn't shoot a lot of threes. Sites, he'll shoot it from the corner. Short, way short. Here comes Cross. That was a nice long rebound that Josh finally corralled. Nice feed. Great feed from Williams to Cross and Snow. All he could do was foul Joshua, and Cross goes to the free throw line. Look at the feed here. What a beautiful look from Kent. You know, when the ball is moving towards the bucket, why not cut to the bucket as well with the basketball? And if you have a nice player like Kent Williams is, he'll be able to dish and create, and there it will allow Josh to go to the line for two shots. He's shooting 64% for the year, and he hits his first one. That's a good sign when he gets that first one to go down. Lytle coming in for Craig Snow. Snow sits down. Snow's having a very difficult night tonight for Evansville. He's not getting that mid-range jumper to fall that he's usually so good at. Cross hits them both. And the dog's lead is its biggest, 13, 31, 18. Stanton to the corner. Lytle can't get it to go down, gets the rebound, fouled, and can't get the bunny to go down. And he's a force inside, and offensively, when he takes that first shot, he's right there. Look at him, he's still underneath. And Jermaine went for the block instead of trying to get position for a rebound. You know, I want to know how he only had two points in the ballgame against Drake. You and I saw Drake. They're not a very physical team down low, and they must have really done a number on him up in Des Moines to limit him to uh, only two points. Of course, they are, they go with a bigger lineup. They go 6'9", 6'8", 6'10". Sure. So he has a bigger force to play against. He looks down on every Saluki on the floor. You know, that, that size that Drake has isn't exactly quality size either. You know, you, you could throw a seven-footer out there, but he might be worse than your 5'11 player, so you're really never sure. Schroeder, double team, nice bounce pass into Jermaine, forces it. Not a good shot by Jermaine as he was double teamed and really didn't have a chance to do anything. This is the time where Evansville runs. They'll run in transition. Stanton usually creates. Nobody's guarding Lido. Finally, Dearman gets over on him, and Southern leads it by 11. Double teamed, and it's out of bounds, and who's going to keep it? Evans. It's going to go to Evansville. Stanton is first in the Missouri Valley Conference in assists. He usually averages about seven assists per ball game. And that is tops. Michael Metzer is also a pretty good assist man as well up at Indiana State. Stanton to trigger it to Seitz. Can't get it to go, and a rebound controlled by Mills. And here come the dogs. They've got some transition. Cross from behind. Hetty on the foul. And Southern doing a nice job in transition when it looked like they had nothing early on. Really got it to go, and Josh will go back to the free throw line. And there, Southern really didn't have numbers. Josh just pushed anyway. He saw somewhat of a little hole there, and like a running back, he, he flashed right through it, went to the goal. I'll go line to try to cap it at the foul strike. Got the first one. Josh has five points. Runyon and Belcher back in. Runyon for the aces. Marcus Belcher for the Salukis. Brandon Mells gets a good hand from the Saluki bench, as you see there. Touche Harvey will check in next opportunity. Runyon isn't that bad of a three-point shooter. He ranks 10th in the league in three-pointers made. And I'm sure they might try to flash him up top to get him a, get him a, a shot from one of the wings. He's been known to kill the Salukis from three. Early in his career, when he wasn't as injured, he could really fill it up from three. And again, with this program, you talk about injuries. They've had it in the past couple years. Lytle, again, will go to the free throw line, and Dearman just picked up his third personal foul. And that's the problem. You know, a beautiful entry pass from the wing down to the low block, and Southern really can't match up against the big guy. No, but why didn't Willis pick up any sure. fouls when he was guarding him? That is true. <laughs> so Lytle to shoot two more. Don't listen to that 47%. He hasn't missed tonight. He's got 11 points. Wow. That's above his average. Willis in. Deerman out. Harvey in. Schroeder out. And Jermaine's going to sit for the rest of this half and maybe the start of the second half with three fouls. I would imagine so, and I'm sure he's a little upset at himself. 
for letting Lytle get good position time after time on him. And we'll see how Willis does against him on the next defensive possession for Southern. 32-22, dogs up, 440 left to go in the first half. Williams back in, as you see. Southern really is spacing very nicely tonight. Evansville is following, but there have been just a lot of open buckets for Southern. Harvey, he can take Runyon. He, he can take Cuffle. Can. He can take almost any player on this floor when he's on, that is. Call that on Kent. Yes, they do. You know, Kent's got a little reputation for himself in the Missouri Valley Conference. He is such a good basketball player, and when you're that good, you're going to get some fans not liking you in other towns. And he does so much to create spacing, and right there he did it, and he got whistled for it. And he'll sit on the bench. He didn't complain. Coach Weber complained. And there's Kent sitting down. And Kent, it's a 10-point game. Kent most certainly knows what he does. He's a smart ball player, and he knows how to create those shots. He knows he fouled him. Nice feed to Lytle. He's fouled inside, and Lytle's just making a living at the line, isn't he? It's amazing how open he gets down low. I mean, he's 6'10". He shouldn't be that hard to find, and there Willis got beat, and Abel had to come over and help out. You're not going give to give him an open layup, and percentage-wise, you'll put him at the stripe, but apparently not tonight you don't want to. Percentage-wise, I'd let him shoot the layup. He hasn't made one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and he that just missed a free throw. That's his first miss from the free throw line. He has not been able to convert one conventional three-point play, and he's had some pretty good looks, although Abel didn't mug him on that particular play. He made one out of two. It's a nine-point lead, 32-23. Just ahead of a media timeout, Schroeder about to be double-teamed and fouled on the play. That'll be the sixth team foul on the Aces. And that isn't a good foul for Evansville. He was right in front of the bench, right in front of the Evansville bench, and he was moving the basketball back up top. If he was trying to create down low, then I'd see, you know, trying to get a hand in his face and a hand on him. But a bad foul right there by Evansville. So there'll be in the uh, bonus next foul. Josh Cross up top to the right side and Touche. Schroeder all alone. Terrible shot. It was blocked. But then Touche got a piece of it. So it goes back to the Aces. Bruce Weber, Bruce Weber wanted upset. a foul, didn't get it. We're at our next upset. media timeout. The Dogs lead the Aces 32-23. We'll be back. With Russ Eisenstein, this is Mike Trude. It's 32-23. The Salukis lead the Evansville Aces with 349 left to go in the first half. You know, at WSIU, WUSI, we have a commitment to serve you and your family better with the best programs available. But you know, viewer contributions are public television's greatest challenge, but they're also its greatest strength. So if you want to see more Saluki basketball, we need to hear from you right now. Here's the number, 1-800-745-9748. There's a good look at the Saluki crowd on hand tonight. Tom Weber, where are you hanging out now in the crowd? Well, guys, uh, suffice to say, these uh, kids are not happy that I'm here. They're throwing cup holders around here, and these kids just want to get one. But I am in the best seat of the house. Paul and Edie Schmidt, you're Evansville fans, but you are the fans of the game, and you get to sit in this couch. How did you get this? Uh, we don't know. We just got selected at random. All right. Well, it's not. Is it? Is it the best game you could be at for your for your aces? Not really. We would rather see them on top. But are you, are they, you think they're going to win? Well, we hope. Well, I don't know. It's still a pretty good lead for the Salukis. But guys, I'm going to stay here. This is a lounge. <laughs> Send that man some soda and a hot dog, and we'll never hear from him again. He does look very comfortable. <laughs> I think they should put those down on press row. I'd certainly like that seat. 32-23, the dog's couple pushes off. No call, short on the shot. Rebound to Lytle again, and he scores. Again, Southern had three players down there, and they didn't box out. Lytle 6'10", so he could reach above everybody. Great positioning there. He's definitely in double figures now. They're back within seven, and Southern has nobody to answer to the 6'10 body. Cross, pushed, and he'll go to the free throw line and shoot one and one as Cuffle gets called for the foul. He most certainly was fouled. It was a nice entry to Josh on the baseline drive, and he used that right arm to push off on him and deter him from going to the bucket. One of the bonus for Josh Cross. He's made three out of four tonight in the ballgame. Trying to increase the lead back to nine. 
30 hits. This is such an important ball game for Southern to try to turn this around. It's been a very difficult three game stretch for them, even though they are one and two in the stretch. They have two home games coming against Southwest Missouri and Creighton. And Josh. if you can win on the road, you can try to translate to winning at home. He hit one out of two again, and that's been his M.O. most of the season, one out of two. Nice feed inside to Runyon. High off the glass, no good. Lytle right there. That's not good for anybody's back, especially Runyon's. Schroeder, charge. No, they call the block. And Abel got pretty lucky there. He forced a bad situation going into the hole. He tried to create something when he didn't have the numbers, driving against Seitz. Well, I think that was a pretty good call. And Look where Seitz is. Mm -hmm. He was too far underneath the basket to try to take a charge on that one, so it was a good call. Sure. And Abel go to the free throw line and shoot two after Evansville missed a golden opportunity at the opposite end. It's a glory of replay, Mike. We can take a look and uh, see when a call is correct and when it's not correct. And there it just seemed like Seitz kind of shuffled his feet and he was too far under, like you mentioned. Schroeder with six. He averages a little under 10. Got them both. He's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. He's over 70% on the year. That's above the national average. Dogs lead it by 10. They've been in control throughout this game. Kuffel. Oh, Touche almost had it. They swing it around to the corner. Nobody boxed out. And that was a strong side rebound as well. And no Southern player was there. At this point last year, Southern was up by 20. And they were going into the locker room with the win already in hand. Here it's a little closer. Good steal by Touche Harvey. His hands are just everywhere tonight, Mike. Belcher with it, 2.20 left on the clock. Mismatch, Southern couldn't find it though. Evansville finally recognized it though. Schroeder with it. And they'll back it out, work the shot clock, which is down to 16 seconds. Southern spacing the floor out now. They might as well milk this. Shot clock down to six. Touche, crossover. Up, no good. Rebound, Schroeder tips it back out to Belcher, and Southern gets a fresh 35, and Bruce Weber calls a 30-second timeout. Good call on that play. A great crossover by Touche. Had a good look at the basket, just didn't go, and Schroeder with the nice rebound and tip back out, and Southern will have a full shot clock to work with. And that was a nice possession by Southern. They milked that uh, that shot clock so nicely. They didn't have a lot of cutters through the hole, but you know there they tried to create for Touche, and there the shot was just a little too long, but a beautiful tip out by Abel. He knew that he couldn't come down with the basketball. He tipped it back up to where there were a couple of Salukis waiting for the uh, offensive possession to start all over again. Salukis are back home Wednesday night against Southwest Missouri State. We will broadcast the game right here on WSIU WSI. The game will start at 7 o'clock, and then a week from this afternoon, I should say, Southern takes on Creighton at the SIU Arena. The game will be broadcast nationally on ESPN starting at 1 o'clock, and we want to pack the arena next Saturday when Creighton comes back to the arena because they put a pasting on the dogs the other night in Omaha. And what a better way to show off the Salukis to the nation than beating Creighton on ESPN, huh? And that's a very important conference game, especially if Southern can get the win and a win against Southwest. Uh, that will set up a, a forward movement for the dogs in the conference standing, and that's where they want to be. They don't want to be playing on Friday. Foul call on Sylvester Willis, illegal pick or a hold inside, and we'll go to the other end and shoot free throws. And it looks like it's going to be Clint Kuffel at the free throw line. He's a 6'6 freshman from Sherman, Illinois, averaging, oh, about seven points a ball game. Shoots free throws in an 86% clip. His first point of the game. For Evansville, conversely, this is uh, such a big ball game for them as well. This is their final home game for a while. They'll go on the road. The Western Swing in the Valley Conference to Wichita State and Southwest Missouri. And if you can't get a win on the road, or rather at home, uh, you might not get a win at those two places. Dogs lead it by eight. Minute 30 left to go in the half. Cross. Nice feed to Schroeder. Gets it to go. You know, Southern has had just players that have been wide open tonight. And right there, Abel was right underneath the bucket, and there was no Evansville player to be found. We talked about the matchups, and Abel's a lot is able to go down low and post up the uh, smaller guard. Here's where Snow is effective, but he missed it. Rebound to Cross. 
you know, it just seems that Evansville might have been targeting Kent Williams just a bit too much. Some other players are certainly hurting the Aces tonight. We're under a minute to go for the first half. I'll tell you what, I, I've seen Snow for three and a half years, and he doesn't miss wide open threes like that. He caught fire against Bradley in the second half last week and in the overtime, but he had a wide open look. Yeah, and he really springboarded the Aces to the victory here on this floor. He had 25 points for that ball game. 10 on the clock. Belcher couldn't get it to go. Rebound to Josh with Cross. Goes up strong. No. Willis, no. Sly comes down with it. The dogs can take the final shot. He stepped out of bounds. Hmm. Court awareness. Court awareness. He's just a freshman. I was looking at that uh, that line, and I'm seeing how close he was to it. And he didn't touch it by much, but he did touch it. That's a shame because Southern really could have held the basketball for the last possession. They had a couple of good looks. I think right there, Josh thought he was going to get a foul by pump faking, going up with the shot. He just didn't get enough contact to call the foul. And Southern gives Evansville the last shot for the first half. Evansville to go for last one. They brought Runyon in because they'll try to penetrate and dish it out for a three to either he or Snow. Sights with it. That's Stanton. They both like to drive. This is such a huge possession because this translates to the start of the second half. You get a little momentum going into halftime if you can happen to get a couple points. Five on the clock. Snow, no good. Rebound controlled by the Salukis. And they do have a halftime lead. And they've been playing very, very well. The Salukis got ahead by as many as 13 in this basketball game and lead at halftime 37 to 27. And Brian Dunn, I believe, is just about ready to go with Coach Weber. So let's go over to Brian. Brian? Well, Coach, you guys have been really active on the defensive zone, and that's been able to translate in some open breaks for you guys. Well, we, it, it eases the pressure on your offense when you get some transition. We, we had a lot of people. Abel's been active, got a lot of deflections. Touche came in and did some good things. And then, it, and then you get some layups. we got to make some layups, though. That one chance, we had three opportunities, didn't get it, and they get a layup on the other end. Josh missed a couple little bunnies. Those are catch up if you don't make them. So a game is, it's a funny thing. The team that gets the most layups and, and makes them usually is the team that win it. So far, we've got more than them, but we got to make sure they don't do that in the second half. Maybe a negative thing on the defensive zone is that Dan Little is getting a lot of touches well, inside. Well, we got so much pressure out on the perimeter, we're not helping well. Sly's got to realize he's got to get behind him, make him make a shot over him, don't give him angles. Same thing with Jermaine. So we got to do a better job of that in the second half. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank Good you. luck in the second half. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Coach Weber. Dogs lead it over the aces. It's 37 to 27. We are at halftime, and we have more halftime information for you when we come back after this. And there you see the halftime score. The Dogs lead the Aces 37 to 27. A good defensive first half by the Salukis as they limit Evansville to just 26% shooting. And there's the Jermaine Deerman steal and slam. Jermaine has five points in the basketball game. So uncharacteristic for Evansville to be shooting this poorly from the floor. We mentioned that horrible 23% from the uh, from the field. They're second in the Missouri Valley in shooting behind Drake, who shoots the ball very well. So you'd have to imagine that uh, the second half is not going to be similar in the fact of uh, shooting, but Southern is defending so well, and they're creating those bad shots for Evansville. There's the double team. Click it out to Cuffle for three, and the shooting woes continue. Williams not able to save it, and Evansville will keep it. So they've already decided to double team down low, and then Lytle kicked it all the way across the floor to a wide open Clint Cuffle. If they start hitting those threes, Southern can't double down. And that is the thing to watch for in this half. At the beginning part, you see all the changes that were made at halftime, and they're going to start doubling down on Lytle. Stanton, nice move on Marcus Belcher up top sights. Feed down low, Lytle scores and a foul. He is unstoppable. That kid has 17 points for the ball game. And you see, it was a good entry pass, but not that good. And Willis was there. He could have tipped the ball away. Josh was just in a very difficult position. He had to slide over and commit the foul. Called the foul, or called the foul on Josh. Lytle missed the only free throw Evansville missed in the first half, and he starts off the second half just as he did in the first half, knocking down the free throw. Dogs lead it by seven. For Cross, that is personal foul number two on the ball game. And we mentioned Jermaine Dearman with the three fouls. He isn't starting the second half. 
Kuffel knocks it away, and Evansville's picked up the intensity on the wings already. Mm -hmm. They've had great pressure throughout the game at the point guard spot. Jim Cruz is no slouch of a coach, folks. Southern just traditionally is very good of late in recent history. Southern is outstanding against Evansville, and you'd have to figure that with such a good coach like Jim Cruz, they will come out with intensity and fire on their home court in the second half. Cross, yeah, didn't go. Sly Willis with the rebound, and it won't go. Cross again, yes. <laughs> There have been so many times tonight that Southern has had three, four, five opportunities, and they've missed on those. Snow, Heard top of the key. No rebound to Joshua Cross, and Snow can't hit a shot. Snow on the ball game is 0 for 5 from the floor. He averages 12.9 points a game. Williams, there's a charge. That's three on Kent. Good call. And here's where the fouls are going to start shaking out. Kent Williams has three fouls for the ballgame, as you mentioned. Jermaine Dearman has three. And it's Lytle. He's mm -hmm. everywhere. If you had to pick a player of the ballgame tonight, it certainly would be Lytle. And whoever is entering the basketball to him, most likely Stanton and Runyon. Lytle fell down on his tailbone. And he's a little bit sore, too. So we'll see what happens. He's really hurting. Yeah, he is grimacing very noticeably. He hit the deck pretty hard. But uh, those are the battles of war, and when you take a charge like that, you are going to get hurt, and Kent comes in there so strong, and you better get ready for a runaway freight train when he comes into the lane. Hogs lead by nine. Sights. Tip by Lytle. No. Snow over the top. No. Couple from the corner. Travel with a basketball. Dogs get it back. Turnover number 13 for the Aces against 10 for SIU and the officials missed a couple traveling calls on that end for Evansville and they finally whistled it on them. It's so intense down low, uh, especially in the second half and Evansville's picking up their intensity on the wings. Southern needs to match that. They're only up by nine. This game is not won by any stretch of the imagination right now. Belcher to the wing and Schroeder. Williams can't even get open. Seitz is just on him like a glove. Belcher. Willis wants it down low, foul on Craig Snow, a little push from behind. Snow didn't like the call at all. It was also a bullet pass from Belcher. Willis did have good positioning down low. He was out about 10 feet away from the bucket. Probably a spin move was coming after that. Dogs to trigger it. Way up high to Sylvester. See him checking if he uh, was anywhere close to the timeline there. Schroeder, three. Abel's got 12. He is sixth in the Missouri Valley Conference in three-point percentage, and he rung it up right there. He can shoot, folks, and most recently he has stepped out to shoot the three in recent ball games. Seitz trying to get it to Lytle. There's the entry. No good. Rebound Joshua Cross, and that's what you have to do with Lytle. Nice move by Marcus Belcher. The Evansville bench wanted to walk as uh, one of the Evansville players, Runyon, set up for the charge, and they couldn't get it. Williams for three. Short tip by Cross. No. Wide open. It's Seitz. That's a transition bucket. Winning transition points is what wins you a ball game in many cases. In close ball games, those transition points are going to count. Southern is up by 10, however. And Evansville needs more of that transition game to help them tonight. Seitz was cherry picking after Williams hit the shot. He just kept running down the floor, hoping that his team would get the defensive rebound, and they did. Schroeder. They tried to set him up for an open three, but Evansville was right there. 12 on the shot clock. That shot fake from Willis from about 17 feet out really isn't going to do anything. Williams too strong. Foul on Schroeder. His second, third team foul of the half for the Salukis. I think he just uh, tapped Kuffel on the top of the head. He kind of reached for the basketball and boinked him on top of the noggin and called a foul on Abel. Runyon and Hetty come in. Kuffel and Snow go down. Here's the replay long on that last shot. See if we can see. It's hard to see there, but I think yeah. he did get Kuffel. Mel's in. He's going to guard Jeremy Stanton. Stanton certainly can't create, so Brandon's going to have to be all over on defense and limit those entry passes down to Lytle. Look at the battle between J.D. and Lytle. And he's gonna have to, got three fouls, so he's got to be careful. He certainly has to be careful. You don't want to pick it up right now. Ten on the shot clock. Stanton. Beautiful shot. Nice pass to Petty. His first two points of the ballgame. 
The Aces are as close as they've been. It's eight points. Stanton isn't first in the league and assists for nothing. He had a great shot fake there to create that bucket. And Seitz going to get called for the personal foul. I think the crowd wanted to travel there as Kent was trying to make a baseline move. And he might have shuffled, but the foul came prior to it. Mel's with it. Brandon, who lit these guys up for nine three-pointers in the Valley Tournament, has not even tried a three tonight. Bowie from the corner, that's his shot. And he nails it. Every Saluki who has played tonight has scored. You might as well draw a ring around the floor from 17 feet out to the goal because that is Bowie country, and he'll bury it every time. Sights with it. Up and under, gets it to go. What a wake to Grady. Ran into a roadblock, then kind of used some positioning in the footwork to get the shot off, and he got it to go. Sites can really create, and he's got uh, 12 points in the basketball game. He and Lionel have 30 of Evansville's 36 points. Williams, up and under, no. Rebound to Runyon. This is a big offensive possession for Evansville. Their crowd's finally getting into the ball game. Sites for two. No, too strong. his rebound he's got 14 and you can attribute that basket to Brandon Mills not stepping in for the rebound there he was flying up the floor it was a long rebound it was his rebound and he didn't wrap it up six point game this is the closest they've been in quite a while foul on Lytle who say the fans as Dan Lytle picks up his third personal foul here's the replay of it bullet entry pass no and question he was right on his tail, and he got him with the body more, the, more so than the hand pushing from behind. And we've come to our me first media timeout of the second half. Evansville trailed by 10 at half. The Dogs lead it by six. It's 44-38. We'll be back. Welcome back to Roberts Stadium. The Dogs led it 37-27 at halftime. Evansville has crept to within six. It's 44-38. You know, at WSIU, we have a commitment to serve you and your family better with the best programs available. So if you would like to see more Saluki basketball on the air, then we need to hear from you right now. Call now to make your pledge of financial support at 1-800-745-9748. We will appreciate your pledge, and we will try to get more Saluki basketball on for you in the future. Brian Dunn is our sideline reporter tonight. Brian, what you got? Last month, uh, former Yankee great Dave Winfield was elected to the Bro Baseball Hall of Fame. One of his former teammates is Evansville's own Don Mattingly. Mattingly owns a restaurant in town, and he has the only private box seat high above the Roberts Stadium floor. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brian. The dogs lead it by six, and they have the basketball out underneath their basket. Mattingly was eligible for the Hall of Fame, but fell a little shy. Bowie up top. Belcher on the wing. Pretty good player in his own right. And there's some pretty good players on the floor right now and a bad pass across. Tip up to Hetty. It's a four-point game. We talked about the transition buckets, and Evansville just got one right there, and Southern needs to calm down a little bit. Over the back on Lytle. How about it? They're going to call a jump ball. It'll be Saluki basketball. As Kent pulled the trigger too fast on that three, there's the end result there. And they're going to claim it was all ball, so it's a uh, jump ball, and Southern gets it on the... Deerman fouled by Jeremy Stanton. That absolutely was a foul, and the fans here don't like it. They should have had a foul called on Evansville to play prior because Lytle certainly went over the back of uh, one of the Southern players. And here's a big possession for Southern. This is the closest they've been in a long time. They need to tune out the crowd, focus on the good shots that they've been getting, and get this lead back up. Bowie, top of the key to Belcher. Down kick by Stanton, and we'll do it again. 14-10 left to go. Dogs lead it 44-40. Evansville has four team fouls. The Salukis with three. Williams will start the offense now. You know, Mike, this is such a great basketball town. Even though the past success for Evansville hasn't been all that great, these fans are really into the ballgame. Bowie with a horrible shot. Foul on Schroeder over the back. And that's three on Abel. 
So it's four apiece on the fouls. And Schroeder and Williams and Deerman all have three personal fouls. There's the push by Abel. No question over Runyon's back. Last time Southern really got into foul trouble was in the Bradley game, and they eventually lost that ball game, and the fouls really were a catalyst for the Braves getting the victory. I mentioned the recent pass hasn't been all that great. The, the pass a long time ago for Evansville has been outstanding. We'll touch on that a little later in the broadcast. Stanton to Seitz. Jumper, no good. Rebound, Deerman. Nice strong that time, and good box out by Southern. Lytle just couldn't stretch his arms out long enough to garner the rebound. Belcher. Jermaine, one-on-one. -on -one. Scores, no, tip, no. Schroeder, yes. Four touches for SIU, three from Deerman. He struck out there, and Abel comes up with the weak side help. Runyon all the way to the hoop, and he draws the foul against Tyrese Bowie. And Bowie wanted to know what he did. Well, he just hacked him on the dribble drive to the bucket. Here it comes right here. There's Tyrese with the body. Yeah, it, it was the body more so the hand. And it, it was a shot fake from Runyon that really started it off. Evansville, partner, they just seem to be pay, playing with a lot more poise than they did in the first half. They're more confident in their offensive possessions. Runyon a 71% free throw shooter. Knocks down the first one. Snow back in, as is Alaria. And if Snow can get cooking, things could get interesting as Bowie and Schroeder sit down for the dogs. Cross and Harvey come in. Snow, the all MVC player, 0 for 5 from the floor tonight. Runyon only hits one of two. So the dogs' lead is 5, 46 41. 13.02 as clock is running here in the second half. And that will just beat a coach up. When you are down and you have the opportunities from the line and you don't convert, you can't expect to win a ball game. Foul is going to go against Chuck Hetty. His second. Here's the replay. Hetty on the spin. Triple team. And there's the foul. And Jermaine Dearman will go to the free throw line to shoot two. He made his only free throw in the first half. He's got five points. Shooting from the foul line certainly Always an adventure for Jermaine Deerman. From the stripe on the year, he is 59%. Too strong. He had no arc on that one. You know, announcers talk about it all the time, the jinx that they put on free throw shooters. I hope I just didn't uh, do it right there by uh, mentioning his free throw shooting percentage. Jermaine hits the second one. Lead is back up to six points, 47-41. That time in that possession, Jermaine did a real nice job working against three aces. He powered up and created that foul. And that's what Southern needs to do. But he has to be careful. He's got 3,000. He's still fighting down low. Touche on Runyon. Late, but finally got there. There's Teddy. Snow. Open. Scores. And that's what they're going to do, partner. You mentioned that you don't see him missing from long range too often. And now they're, they're going the alternate route. They're trying to get him some free shots. 10 feet in, and he's dribbling and driving to the hoop. Deerman got an elbow from Hetty. Touche to the hoop. Travels, no call off of Kent Williams, out of bounds. And Evansville will keep it. They'll get it back rather on the turnover. 47-43. The Aces can get as close as they've come since it was 2 to nothing. You mentioned the Bradley bug during the postgame show up at Carver Arena, and the second half hasn't been too kind for Southern in recent ball games, and it's starting out not to look so great right now. What a nice move by Seitz. Seitz has 16. It's a two-point game. Southern needs to match this intensity that Evansville is coming out with, and the crowd's getting back into the ball game. Another huge possession for SIU. Joshua Cross. Yes. Great feed around the horn to Josh, who's got 10. And the senior answers, and a nice job by the sixth man of the year from last year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Well, Larry, you can't leave snow open out there. Evansville doing a nice job of spacing. Seitz wants to drive on Williams again. There's no call and a rebound to Deerman. If you dip your shoulder, it should be called a foul, and he certainly did it there. But I guess uh, the home court kind of takes that away a little bit. Jermaine down low to cross. Touche on the move, almost an air ball. Rebound to Belcher. Southern did a nice job of setting up Touche there on the right elbow. They sent all the cutters down low, and he had a wide open shot. 15 on the shot clock. 
He called a jump ball on that. It's going to go over to Evansville on the turnover. That was real quick on the jump ball call as well. We've come to our second media timeout in the second half. The Dogs lead at 49 to 45. We'll be back. the score Southern Illinois 49 University of Evansville 45 WSIU wants you to challenge yourself and stay curious when we ask for your money we are really challenging you by asking will you help support Saluki basketball in the river region we know that answer is yes so we hope to encourage you to take on the challenge and support the quality of programming provided on this channel by calling 1-800-745-9748 with your pledge Tom Weber how are you guys I'm here on courtside and I found the SIU fans. I'm going to turn around. I think I can get them to wave. Look at how far up they got them to sit. That's two bus loads worth of SIU fans, and they stuck them all the way in the back. I don't believe it. You'd think they could get better seats than that, but I think they're still having a good time. I just don't know why you'd stick them up so far, but I don't know. I think they'll still be allowed if this game gets as good as it is, guys. I think they will, too. 49 to 45 is the score. A good contingent coming over from Carbondale. You know, this school only has 2,500 kids that are enrolled in it, but what a history this Evansville Ball Club has and this program has. It's always a special night coming to this great basketball town. They have so many past championships, five NCAA basketball national championships. Jerry Sloan went here, and of course, all the tradition that goes with it. A wonderful, wonderful tradition at Evansville. Great feed to Hetty. Two-point game, 49-47. Southern's letting the guards drive down too far, and they're creating as well. And there, it was a wraparound and a finish. Southern's problem all year long has been having trouble stopping dribble penetration. And it's showing here in the second half. 16 on the shot clock. Southern shooting 45% for the night, 34% for Evansville. It's starting to even out a little bit, partner. Six on the shot clock. Dearman's travel with the basketball turnover. Number 15 for the Salukis, 13 for the Aces. Rebounds are even up at 26. Leading point getter for Southern, Abel Schroeder with 14. 10 points for Joshua Cross, 18 points for Dan Lytle, and 16 for Adam Sykes. Aces can tie it, or if they get a three, they can take the lead. It'll be their first for the ball game. Foul on Snow the other way. Or is it on cross? It's on Snow. Here's the replay. There's the elbow right there by Snow. Yeah. He's only got four points for the night, folks, and he's he's not going to be allowed to be kept at bay like that. He won't be. He'll definitely try to do anything that he can to get the basketball free. Other scores in the Missouri Valley Conference tonight. Bradley knocked off Drake 62-47 up in Des Moines. And 68-55 Southwest Missouri starts uh, Wichita. And Wichita probably has their tickets punched for Friday at Savage Center. 23 on the shot clock. It's a two-point game. It was 10 at half. Down low to Joshua Cross. Schroeder, long three, too long, air ball. Here comes Stanton. Here's a limited running from Evansville, and they'll showcase it now. Joshua Cross with a nice rebound, and the Dogs still cling, cling to that two-point lead. Evansville has had multiple opportunities tonight, Mike, and they just can't finish it off. Dearman, spin, oh. foul on Runyon. And Jermaine will go to the free throw line to shoot two. A real nice powerful move inside. Check it out here. He spins right by Hetty. Oh, I don't know. It's too far underneath the basket. You can't be that far underneath the basket and get you know, a foul. During those experimental, or rather during the tournaments earlier this year, especially in the, the preseason NIT, they, they tried the dash line around the goal. They now took I it think, away. I think they're just using it. I, I really think they are. They're not supposed to. You know, there is that, that unwritten rule that if you're too far underneath the hoop, you can't be called for the charge. But right there, I, I don't know. I'd have to see another replay, but I think J.D. might have gotten a little lucky there. He hits the free throw. Dogs lead it by three, 50 to 47. Short. Oh, Cross. beautiful. Joshua Cross, nobody checked him out. He's got 12. Schroeder has 14. The seniors are leading the way with 26 points between them. Dogs lead it by five. And on that tip, the two busloads of Southern fans that came here sprung up like jackrabbits. Very pleased with the tip and a nice job by Southern. 
Marcus Belcher almost got the pick and Stanton can't believe that he didn't call a foul and let's see it here. Uh, it was after the fact there that yeah, Stanton there, thought he got fouled. There was no foul. The ball already was out of bounds. Lytle back in for Evansville. Jermaine has played a long time with only three fouls. He's done a nice job. And kudos to the sophomore. Snow working on Joshua Cross. There's Lytle. He walked all over the place. Oh my goodness. Everybody in the crowd called that one. Watch it again. Check it out, Dan. One, two, three. Hey, let's take a bus. It's cheaper. <laughs> He's Dogs 6'10 lead it by five. And you're not going to miss a big step from a 6'10 player like that. He's just too large. And of course, when he travels, he's going to take up a lot of real estate. And he did right there. Another turnover, and they can't get over the hump. <laughs> Jermaine wanted to shoot a three. I don't think so. He did get that gift, uh, that uh, three-point prayer answered against Indiana State partner. Why not try him out one more time? Not with 25 <laughs> on the shot clock. Absolutely. Williams, nice feed to Jermaine. Can he hold on? He jump ball. And the dogs keep it. These jump ball calls, these alternate possession calls are very quick tonight. And right there, J.D. just got a little locked up. It was, yeah, it, it was a good call. Joint possession, he went up and he got it as he was going up. Eight on the shot clock. Kent. No, rebound. Deerman puts it back in. He's got nine. The dogs lead by seven. Nice power move from JD, and you would have liked to see him slam it down a little bit for, for an exclamation point, but the point's a point, and Southern's up by seven again. Up top, it's Kuffle. Sights with it. Can't get it to fall, and Josh with the knee is going to be called for the foul. So Cross picks up his third personal foul. There are a couple of Saluki players just got tangled up a little bit as the basketball is being pushed towards the bucket. Adam Sights, the human scoring machine tonight, has 16. He had eight in the first half. He's got eight in the second half. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot two, and he's an 87% free throw shooter. Well above his average. He averages 12.6 of all game. The junior from Otwell, Indiana. Brandon Mel's into the basketball game for Marcus Belcher. Marcus gets a hand from the Saluki bench. Marcus has done a real nice job tonight of creating and getting a couple assists down low to J.D. and Sly Willis as well. Sites next free throw is good. And we have come to another media timeout. Evansville trails by five. The dogs lead at 54-49, 7.48 to go. We'll be back. Eisenstein, it's Mike Trude, 54-49, the dogs in the lead. There was a big skirmish the last time the Salukis were on offense, and here's the battle for the rebound. A lot of pushing. That was just incidental contact there, and you're right. I wanted Jermaine to slam it down, but a two is a two is a two, and the dogs lead it by five. Did you know that your financial support now enables us to maintain our current program schedule? It also allows us to acquire exciting new programs and determine which basketball games we'll televise next year. In that case, we need your support. The telephone number is 1-800-745-9748 as Bruce Weber talks to his team in the Saluki huddle. Let's go over to Brian. Brian, what you got? Well, guys, after a recent loose ball went out of bounds as the Aces were coming back down the court, I heard Adam Seitz tell Craig Snow, high post power. What essentially happened afterwards was Craig Snow set a pick for Seitz coming out top. He then used another pick to power pass Kent Williams to the hole for a bucket. The Aces have been doing a great job in the second half of not making that extra pass and avoiding some pressure on the outside that the Salukis really did a good job of doing in the first half and creating some turnovers. Instead, they've been driving to the hole and, and getting some fouls on the way inside. Guys? Thanks, Brian. 54-49 the score. The Dogs with the basketball trying to increase that lead. You know, with all this tradition at Evansville, you wouldn't think that they just back down at home, and they certainly won't. Evansville is the only team in major college basketball that wears sleeves on their uniform, and their media guide, former great Scott Trepler, wrote a poem about it, and it certainly is an honored tradition to wear the sleeves here at Evansville. Mills has not attempted a three, wanted to there, but couldn't get it off. 12 on the shot clock. 
There's Brandon. Gets Lytle up in the, oh, a big kick and will restart the shot clock. I think that missed wide right, Mike. So the dogs get another 35. I think they haven't reset it yet. They should. And they There do. it is. 35 on the shot clock. Dogs lead by five. Kent with it. Right wing, Brandon, now he'll come set up the offense. You know, that was a football style kick, but they dropped football here a couple years ago. There'll be no tryouts for that young man. Kent, baseline, short jumper, high, arcing shot, no, rebound. Who gets it? Evansville does, went off of Josh, out of bounds. And Josh pointed to the official saying, you're right, you're right, it's off me. I, I bounced it on the line. Exactly seven minutes to go in the basketball game. Dogs led it by 10 at half. The Aces in the first 13 minutes have climbed back to within five. Southern is looking to get over 500 and go to 11 and 10 on the year. Evansville trying to even up at 11. There's Lytle. No, rebound controlled by Cross. Great pass. See if Kent can finish. Josh can and the foul. Beautiful touch and beautiful pass and a great finish by Josh Cross. Oh, wow, what a play. And that is exactly what Southern needs. Oh, what a beautiful pass. Josh got it to Kent. Kent gave it right back and a finish and a foul. And that is what Southern needs to tune this crowd out. They're up by seven again. Foul was on Sites. That was his third personal foul. Josh trying to complete the three-point play. Goes in. Cross with 15 points. Schroeder with 14. That's 29. Josh has nine here in the second half as Kent goes down. Belcher comes back in. Dodds lead it by 857-49. And you're seeing some more offense from Josh. He's a senior. As you mentioned, he's deep into double figures now. He hasn't scored all that much in recent ball games. Cuffle for three. Yes. And he can shoot it from out there. Definitely can. Very good shooting percentage from beyond the arc. Five-point game. Deerman travels with an basketball. Shuffles that right foot. Kuffel is one of the leaders in the Missouri Valley Conference. He's eighth in the league with the three-point shooting percentage of 40%. So when he's out on the floor, and when they're down by five and seven, Southern's got to get out and mark on him. Stanton getting hounded by Brandon Mills. Belcher, down low at Snow on cross, turn around, no. Lytle finishes. Dan Lytle has 20. Folks, he had two points against Drake in the last ball game up in Des Moines, in the ball game that uh, Evansville dropped. Lytle's career high is 24 against Southwest Missouri. Bruce Weber wants a timeout, a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. The Dogs will be back in action Wednesday night at the SIU Arena against the Southwest Missouri State Bears who won their basketball game tonight at home over Wichita, 68-55. to The Salukis lost the heartbreaker at Southwest Missouri, Southwest Missouri earlier this year and uh, won a little revenge. So we'll have the ball game for you starting at 7 o'clock right here on WSIU, WSI. Here's that feed again from Williams to Cross on that nifty two-on-one -on -one break a couple of possessions ago. Great passes are just so exciting, Mike, and that was a beautiful two-man game that Kent Williams and Josh Cross had as they went up the floor. Just great passes, weaving them between a couple of Evansville players. You mentioned Southwest Missouri. They'll come in a little banged up. Scott Brakebill, of course, done for a good portion of the season. And, of course, Mike Wallace, again, uh, is out for the Bears as well. So they'll be a little banged up coming into Carbondale. They did get the win tonight over Wichita. Great steal by Snow. And jump ball. Evansville gets it. And I thought Snow traveled with it when he had the ball on his back. It was like a fish flopping around, a fish out of water flopping around with his feet. Three-point game. Evansville can tie it with the three. The closest they've been is two. And this is where Snow will play such a big part, if not getting the shot, creating the shot, and dishing off to someone else. Couple. Yeah, if they get a three, this place will erupt. It just erupted. In the 45-year history of this building, Evansville has only had two seasons under 500. They take care of their business at home. Southern has done so well here in recent history. And now it's back to even. Schroeder, no, not even close. And here comes transition. Sites. 
Schroeder belts it, and Southern gets the ball back. There was no foul there. Beautiful Williams, Abel. left hander, yes. Great transition move by Kent, and the dogs are back up. Sights. Yes, so we're tied again. This is turning into a track meet in the last 30 seconds. I mentioned that Evansville runs sparingly, and they run in transition. And it's just been a transition ball game in the last two or three offensive possessions. And Williams, top of the key. The crowd is standing here at Roberts Stadium. Salukis have four players in double figures cross top of the key. No rebound. Dearman foul on Jermaine. That's his fourth. He pushed off. away from the hoop the ball was only up in the, the air. only the fourth team foul on the Salukis no excuse me sixth seventh team foul and we'll come to the other end and shoot free throws and Craig Snow has the opportunity to give Evansville a lead in the basketball game right there the ball was just a high rebound he really lost focus of who was around him he tried to uh, get to that rebound and he just pushed off before he did so and Sly will check in JD will check out Snow hit his only two free throws earlier in the ball game. Has a chance to give the Aces the lead as we're tied at 59. You know, I mentioned big time players make big time plays. Snow certainly is a big time player. Missed he missed it. And he knocked down that three to tie the ball game. You can be rest assured that he'll get the ball and another key possession for Evansville. Dogs working the transition. Bowie, top of the key. Ken's open. Can't get it to him. Sights, hand checking all over the place. Williams, yes. What a floater. What a drive as well, and he finished. Sights blocked. And blocked out of bounds. Great defense by the dogs, and we're at our final media timeout of the basketball game. Williams has given the dogs a two-point lead. We'll be back. to Robert Stadium. We have 337 left to go. The Dogs lead at 61 to 59. Let's see that last block down low by Tyrese Bowie. Yes, it did hit the line. Dogs lead it by two. You know, we have a commitment to serve you and your family better with the best programs available. But you know that viewer contributions are our greatest challenge, also our greatest strength. So if you want to see more Saluki basketball, call now, 1-800-745-9748 and make it possible to see more Saluki basketball in the future. Tom Weber, you are with maybe the youngest Saluki fan here tonight. That's right, guys. You don't have to go that far to find Saluki fans. I thought they were all way back there, but here we have first row. Here's Katie and here's Nick. Katie, who's your favorite team? Um, uh, Salukis. All right. Nick, I don't think you can talk, can you? Okay, <laughs> all right. That's the best commentary we've had all game. Young fans, guys. It's great to see them. Best commentary, huh, Tom? Huh? <laughs> I think uh, Mike Trude will beg to differ to that. 61-59. Dogs lead it. Evansville with the basketball. 3.37 to go. It's going to the wire, folks. Nice feed to snow. And it's very difficult, you know, to stomach not getting a man on the best player that they have on the floor. Craig Snow just waltzed into the lane on the inbounds pass and an easy kiss, and it's tied again. Tyrese Bowie, not the best defensive player, got lost, and Snow had an easy layup, and there's a foul on Sites. Fourth personal foul on Adam Seitz. And Jim Williams will go to the free throw line to shoot. Jim Cruz talked about before the ball game how important it is to get a man out on Kent Williams. He said he's their best player. We're going to do whatever they, we can to limit what he can do. And in the last couple of minutes of this ball game, it looks like Seitz is going to be on him. And there he just uh, was a step shy and fouled him. Kent Williams has hit 29 free throws in a row with that one right there. He's got 13 points. Again, 29 free throws in a row. Tries to give the dogs a two-point lead. He missed it. Everything good comes to an end at Evansville. So did his streak at 29. So Evansville could get its first lead with a basket. Timeout. Jim Cruz, a 30-second timeout. 
trying to go over something here. Some scores from tonight. Illinois State at Redbird Arena. They improved their mark on the year to 7-3 and three in the Missouri Valley Conference. 64-52. They knock off Sam Weaver in the Northern Iowa Panthers. UNI falls to 4-18 and 18 and 1-10 and 10 in the NBC. Tune in Monday night to WSIU WUSI TV and take a step back in time as American Experience features Streamliners. America's Lost Trains at 8 o'clock, followed at 9 by an investigation into the sinking of the Lusitania. Bruce Weber going over strategy with his ball club. There's many, many, many more possessions left in this basketball game. 27 on the shot clock, 310 on the game clock. And defense and free throws right now are going to win it because both teams are in the bonus. And the dogs will be in the double bonus on the next Evansville foul. I think during that timeout, Bruce Weber really needed to tell his ball club, get a man on snow at all times. At all times, and Josh is on him now. And Stanton threw it too far for Craig Snow. And the dogs still have the lead. Deerman comes in, a little offense for defense now as Sly Willis sits down. And the dogs will try to get it into Jermaine to work on Lytle. And I like the matchup of Cross on Snow defensively. Right there, he forced that turnover. It was an entry pass to Snow, and he denied it. And it had to be thrown too wide. Josh up top to Belcher. Wing to Williams, right top of the circle. And they back away from JD from 17 feet out there. Belcher penetrates, almost he travels. Won. I thought he did. I think he did too. 10 on the shot clock. Marcus, pull up three. No, too strong. Rebound to Lytle. And there, JD kind of shied away. He had to. He's in deep foul trouble. Couple with it. And again, Evansville looking for its first lead. No, too strong. You see, you just let him shoot the basketball. 2-12 left to go. Dogs clinging to that one-point lead. They need to get a good shot. And I think right there, Lytle kind of used his elbow and probably fouled J.D. And, and he knew that J.D. would back away from him. 30-second timeout by Bruce Weber. A lot of coaching going on the final three minutes here. Let's try to get in close on that Saluki huddle and see what Bruce Weber is going to call. He's going to call a play. And nine times out of ten is going to go to Kent Williams or Abel Schroeder. But the way that uh, Cross is playing tonight and Jermaine Dearman, I'm comfortable with any one of them trying to get it in close. Here's a replay on Marcus Belcher on the drive there. He kept his left foot down. Good call. The wonder of replay, Mike. Dogs with it. 2.03 to go in the game. 26 on the shot clock. They lead it by one. You heard a couple of things. You hear picks and screens, and then you hear Abel's name mentioned as well. You'd have to think they're trying to set him up for a three-pointer on one of the wings. Williams with it. Schroeder. There it was. Nine on the clock. Kent's going to have to create. Crossover, running one, hander good, Kent does it again. He's got 15, dogs lead by three. And a big bucket by, right there by Kent. That was a running one-hander that he had that fall, fell off the rim in Peoria. He got it to fall there, and that's a big bucket because Southern's up by three. Lytle, hook, tip, do they want goaltending? Southern wants goaltending. How about Adam Seitz going sky high to tip that one in? It's a one-point game. You know, if the ball is over the cylinder and the player touches it offensively, that is offensive goaltending. And you have to see a replay there, but I thought that he got the ball and he interfered with it and tapped it in. Evansville might have had a couple of dip points right there. 20 on the shot clock. Dogs lead by one. You need another bucket. Belcher to Jermaine. Hook shot. No, rebound to Snow. Almost lost it. Dogs have to get back. Somebody's got to pick up Stanton, and they do. A three coming from Snow. No good. Rebound to Josh Cross. The dogs can almost run out the clock. There it was, Snow. You, you get the ball in his hands. He's such a good player, and that's who Evansville wanted to have it. And that was a shot to try to do it. 20 on the shot clock, 18 on the shot clock, 22.3. On the game clock, they're going to bring Tyrese into the ball game because he can shoot free throws. Does he come in for Dearman? He comes in for Dearman. The only problem with this is 
and Bruce Weber is going to call timeout. They're going offense for defense to bring Tyrese in. Evansville will only have four seconds left if Southern takes a shot at the buzzer. We'll see what happens. Shooting from the free throw line, if you're looking at this, Southern 88% from Tyrese Bowie, 82% from Kent Williams, and of course he has that string going. Conversely, shooting the three-pointer, the Aces definitely want the ball in the hands of a couple players. And a couple of them certainly can shoot the three ball. Clint Couple, one of those players, he's one of the big ones in the conference. And there it seemed Ooh, to be over boy. the cylinder, Mike, and, I, and you can't allow that. That should have been offensive goaltending to put Evansville down by one. You know, yeah. I wonder if we can see that again, if you guys can, the, in the truck can have that again, if Seitz even touched it. Because from our vantage points out here, it looked like he flicked it with his left hand. If you guys can run that bad, let's see it again. Check to see if Seitz does touch it or not. Yeah, he, he got I don't know if he it. hit it or if he hit the rim. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, first <laughs> but thing it I was looked, definitely in the cylinder. I looked over to the, our sideline man, Brian Dunn, and, and he looked over at me. He said definitely he touched the basketball, and it should have been offensive goaltending. So I'll trust my buddy Brian over there. I think that uh, he was correct. And if we had a different angle on that replay, who knows? But, you know, you got to deal with the present now. Southern is up by one, and who would have thought that after that first half, this would be a ball game after Evansville was so cold from the floor? Well, the way they came back against Bradley a week ago tonight, you have to figure they're going to shoot better because nobody shoots 23% for the whole game. Sure. Evansville's a much better shooting ball club than that. They still aren't shooting very well overall, but Southern has limited the fouls. Only seven this half. The free throws this half. Evansville has not tried many. So now the Salukis have 18 seconds on the shot clock. And how big would it be to shoot a shot with about two left and make it to guarantee that you can't lose the basketball game? Snow is off the floor. Couple is on the floor for Evansville. That's the player they want to have it offensively. Offense for defense, that's why. Bowie with it. Alaria fouls him. So Evansville wanted to foul as quickly as they could. They fouled Southern's best free throw shooter. Who is uh, shooting 88% from the stride. And we're in the conference. double bonus, so he will get two free throws. Now, it will be interesting. Will Coach Weber bring in Jermaine Dearman for Tyrese if he makes both free throws? You know, you're playing offense for defense. These are two. Because Snow's going to check in, right, too. Right. These are two Big Ten disciples. Bruce Weber from Purdue, Jim Cruz from Evansville. They're two pretty good coaches, and they're going to play the offense for defense game. Who he misses. And there's Snow. And those are the two players to watch for, Snow and Couple for Evansville. Jermaine's going to come in for Tyrese if he makes the free throw. And Jim Cruz wants a timeout. So he's going to try to freeze Tyrese a little bit more as Cruz calls a timeout. 17.9 seconds left in the basketball game. And this, again, will be a full timeout. Again, we are back with you Wednesday night at the SIU Arena as the Dogs take on the Bears from Southwest Missouri State in a 7.05 tip-off. The Dogs looking to get some revenge against the Bears for the ball game played earlier this year in Springfield, Missouri. Next Saturday, the Dogs are at home against the Creighton Blue Jays. The game will be a nationally televised game on ESPN, and we want every Saluki fan to get to the arena for that one and support the Dogs as they show off Southern Illinois University in the program on national TV. You know, this is such a big win to get. If, if you win on the road, in the conference and the, and the dogs have only done it once this year at Wichita State. If you win on the road in the conference, you're going to have a chance to move up in the standings. If they get the win tonight, they go back home to Carbondale where they are pretty good at the arena. Not of late so much, but, you know, they got that win against Great. They'll play Southwest and Creighton, as you mentioned, and those are, uh, Creighton's a very good ball club. If you get them away from Omaha, they can lose a couple of, of games. They're seven and four in the league. They've been average away from their home. I think they're two and nine away from uh, the Civic Center in Omaha. So so we'll see what unfolds next Saturday and Wednesday when the Bears take or when the Salukis take on the Bears. But we still have about 17.9 seconds to play here. Tyrese Bowie at the free throw line trying to convert one of two and put the dogs up by two and force Evansville to either play for a tie or go for the win at home with a three. Here we go. Bowie needs to make this free throw. Too strong. Evansville can win it with a deuce. Snow. Schroeder guarding Lytle, and that's a, Snow is wide open. Lytle down low, hook shot, yes. 
Timeout Southern. And it happens again, Mike. That's their first lead since very early in the game. He had Abel Schroeder on him. Nothing you could do, a great look, a great feed, but there is still a lot of time left to go. Southern can easily get it down the floor and get a decent shot off with 4.2 seconds left in the basketball game. You only need a two or a foul or anything to get to the free throw line, and Tyrese Bowie, Southern's best free throw shooter on the year, could not convert two free throws that could have given the dogs a three-point lead. They trail it by one with 4.2 seconds left, which is almost the exact same time that was left in the Bradley game about two weeks ago. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And they, they got that big shot up in Peoria and they get it again tonight here in Evansville. Uh, Southern just plagued against an outstanding Offensive possessions under 20 seconds there. It just shaped up that Lido was going to get the basketball, and he had to figure the big guy was going to knock it down. Evansville goes back a little bit. See what happens. Kent's got it. The heave. He goes! He made it! He made it! Kent Williams makes the three-pointer. win it 67 to 65 a second miracle finish this year for the dogs they did it at home against indiana state on a three from dearman and they do it tonight against the evansville aces to win the basketball game 67 to 65 oh my goodness amazing Mike you know you're gonna get the ball in the hands of Kent Williams and it certainly was there a wide open three ball from him and he had some separation he created that space and a nice job here's Brian Dunn with the victory the drew it out. Well, we wanted to get Kent the ball at the end of the game they ran at him and all he had was a heave ho and it went in and he's had three shots at the end of the games in different games he hasn't made them this time he made the toughest one I'm just happy because we broke down on defense at the end. Uh, we talked about in the huddle, if he missed it, we wanted Josh Cross on Lido. Josh Cross got the wrong guy. Abel ends up, he makes the bucket, but we won. So sometimes you got to be lucky. We've been lucky with Jermaine now and with Kent. So at least we're hanging in there. Jim Cruz is going to start thinking, you've got his number. This is five in a row now. Well, you know, and then Southwest, who we play on Wednesday, they got our number. They won six against us. So it's a crazy thing, different matchups. I thought we played real well. I thought we were focused. Our kids play with a lot of heart. We played very hard, and a lot of people contributed. All right, go enjoy this. Thank coach. you. Thank you very much. Let's send it back to you guys. Thank you, Brian. What me worry? The dogs win at 67 <laughs> to 65 on the miraculous three-pointer by Kent Williams. 4.2 seconds left on the clock. Kent just came down. He looked up at the shot clock, let it fly, knocked it off the backboard, and it went down for the win. How about it? Amazing. You know, so many times this year it's happened against Southern Illinois, and tonight it happens, and Southern gets the win. What a miracle. For Russ Eisenstein, Brian Dunn, and Tom Weber, I'm Mike True. The final score from Evansville, 67-64. to We'll see you Wednesday night.